My Gavan and Melonin, and well met indeed. I am Arika Galadothan, and welcome back to Middle Earth as we finalize the campaign of Cand. Here, before the slopes of Erebor. Dale! We have a sieging Dale! As discussed in the last one, this is the final episode of Cand. And rather than force you all to watch me slog my way through to Dale, I've just moved the army up to Dale, and we're going to fight them here. And here we shall live or die. Dale is, of course, the capital city of the nation of the same name. And the battle map is a custom one. It features very rarely on the channel. So this is a perfect opportunity to show it off. Uh, oh, look, there's the uh, culture building for Dale. That's what a fully upgraded Northern European Inn, I think, looks like. Something that the later games did away with as well. There's the merchant's court. Oh, the building looked particularly silly. Five tiers of... Oh, no. No, there'd be there'd be something on the front there. It wouldn't be perfectly flat. Anyway, I'm digressing. There's the Royal Hall just behind them. It's so it's interesting that some whoever built Dale, and I don't know who it is. I think it might have been RK. And I think, by the way, from what I can gather, I don't think RK is part of the modding team anymore, unfortunately. But uh, RK has created so many great battle maps. It's such a sad, sad, sad day. And I don't mean that sarcastically, I mean that honestly, it genuinely is sad, and I'm trying to give influence to it. But they made this fantastic battle map with, as you can see, with, uh, oh, I just get rid of the start battle. We've got Erebor in the background actually lording over the site of Dale, which is a very, very cool feature. So you've got Erebor way back here, and it obviously has the layout of Erebor, which is pretty cool. Although it is beyond the realms of the battle map, so it doesn't actually mean anything. Uh, and Dale itself sits on this high, high plateau. Um, or the sharp cliff face is probably more accurate, where the only access point to the city walls themselves are this very narrow bridge, this viaduct-like bridge on this side, which gives you access to the gate pretty much only. Or you have to walk all the way around, and you'll note that you cannot walk around on that side. There is a lake in the way. And if memory serves, you can't... Oh, yeah, going around this way is a huge detail. You have to go right round the edge of this lake, all the way past the shoreline, down to the very slopes of Erebor themselves, and then you can cut in on this bridge and get across and hit Dale in the back, where there is arguably then a much more open and attack... open and wall sections to attack. We, however, are going to have to slog our way over this main bridge. And for that purpose, we have brought two rams, just in cases... Uh, the first one might get taken out. I have got siege towers, as you can see, but I don't think they're actually going to be of any use whatsoever. Interestingly, I can't put them around. There we go. Get as close as you possibly can. Don't worry about the archers. And then if we can, let's mount the walls. Yeah. Now, interestingly, the army that awaits us is um, consists of, I think, six or five units. But the unit types are so good that the game thought that this is a 50-50 whether we win or lose this. So that's going to be very interesting to see indeed. Otherwise, all of our ground forces are in the front line here and everything else, as you can see, is mounted. So we're going to struggle in the city here. And this might actually be quite a um, unfortunate and rather difficult battle map. Right, bring that up just in case. Now, can you actually get up to the wall? No, you can't. So put the rams down. Leave the tower! Leave the tower! Let's walk you forward. So the archers on the round. Where's the other archer? Ah, oh, the only one I haven't moved forward. Alright, so out in the city itself, hoping to defend with everything they have against the forces of Khand. Westron defenders, they're of course the garrison unit. There are Lake Town pikemen in there, and there are two Lake Town pikemen companies. Uh, we've also got some Dale Swordmasters who are going to give us some real grief. And if we move back to the town centre where we find the captain, the commander, it is Vidasith himself. Vidasith is one of Dale's starting generals and he comes with Lake Town Pikemen. He starts in Eskaroth. And then they've got another set of Westron defenders and I believe a third one as well on the right there. So there were two actual Dalian, or three, sorry, actual units here. And then the rest of the garrison is made up with, I don't think we're going to need that ram, so you can actually pull back. Just get out of the way so that when the cavalry comes through, you're not blocking them. So, we're going to have to try and force our way past the... The, ram is in place. <laughs> the pikes and the, the sword masters fall. particularly. The sword masters are going to be a pain. Um, but we'll see what we can do. We'll see how we can how we can play it. But it really doesn't matter. Whether we win this or lose this, the purpose was just to show you Dale, really. I'm very much over the canned campaign. I'm very keen to move on. 
my thoughts in that regard are that the channel has always been and has remained even now that I'm not part of DAC solely a selling point for people to play Divide and Conquer and once I have shown everything of a certain faction I always feel it's time to then move on and Can doesn't have anything Our left have to well. be seen the gates have fallen by that I mean I have shown you now everything that Cand can do under this new system where you can start as a horde. And alright, I could have started somewhere else, of course. But um, I think where we started was alright and we fought against Rune and Dale a little. Now Erebor, as you'll see when we go to the Toggle Fog of War, Erebor are actually looking like they're coming over to hit me. But no, I think the time is done. And with that said, I am not, I'm afraid, going to post a vote. Dunland is going to be the next faction that is played. Now, I know Dunland is not wildly popular, and many people will be disappointed at that, and they'll only stay to see some of the new changes and they'll move on. But Lord of Lynx, I messaged him directly, and he has now put the extra work in. He's put in an absolute mountain of work. In fact, Lord of Lynx is pretty much carrying Divide and Conquer through uh, to version 5, if we're being completely honest. The, obviously, there are a lot of talented modders around him, but whilst they might be doing the little bits and bobs, Lynx, as I understand it, is place. doing the majority of all of the coding, the writing, the UI work, all of the stuff that the players notice when it's missing... Um, and modders don't often don't think is really all that important, I used to find anyway, because I am in the same position. I was for a long time in the same position that Lynx is in, where I did the bulk of the everyday stuff. And you might get someone come in who writes a really cool script, and then they leave you your script, and then they often bugger off. And then you're left with working out how did they make their script work, because I'm the one that's actually going to have to maintain it. And that's a part of modding that few people see, few people really appreciate, and Lynx is now carrying that burden. And I respect him greatly for that. Uh, and I don't mind that I'm in essence down talking the other modders because the maintenance aspect of the modding is huge. And uh, so my thanks to Lynx. But anyway, Lynx has finalised the last bits and bobs about done. And there will be a few things missing, but they are at a good point now where they can be shown off. So what I will do is next week while we're doing the Reunited Kingdom, I will do a developer diary that talks about Dunland in preparation for Dunland to then start at the weekend after that. So the weekend of Easter, um, which means nothing to you, obviously, if you're um, not, in, a, in essence, at a Western nation. I mean, I'm not religious at all, but our, our country gets two days off at Easter, um, and that's government mandated. So um, it's always a, an, an event, at least, but I don't celebrate it religiously. Yeah, quite literally. <laughs> literally and metaphorically. Um, anyway, no, by the by... Um, so next week there'll be a developer diary alongside the reunited kingdom videos and then Dunland will start so I'm not going to do a vote so this video is the last that you're going to get um, for canned now the only thing I'm concerned with here is that we might and by might I mean are almost certainly not winning this so can we get the archers to go up on the walls there because we have pushed them back from the wall on that side have we got anyone that can go into shield wall no Oh, we've got Nomads. Nomad cavalry is absolutely garbage. Let's try and disrupt their... Um, let's try and disrupt their setup by charging our cavalry in. Yeah, if we can just force some mass through at the back. Force some bodies in at the back. What are you doing? Just get through. There you go. Yes, there we go. Look, that has worked. We're using the the dead bodies of our cavalry. Although, no, it hasn't because they're routing. They're routing. Oh, no, I think actually we are... If anything, that's just cost us the gate. We have... This is why the AI thinks that they have a chance of winning because we've only got cavalry and cavalry sucks. Right, if we can pull everyone back, the archers can shoot through the gate. got to do something <laughs> come on that should be killing them point blank range and you're not bad archers oh look the towers are absolutely shredding us try and get as close to the base of the wall as you can actually because I think if you're standing at the bottom of the wall they can't shoot you very easily How are we doing, guys? 
three Lake Town Pikemen. That's all that's died. Now, they might have the fully upgraded armor that the dwarves give them. Someone mentioned that in a comment in the last video. We are getting massacred. 50% of our army has died. We haven't even taken the gate. Damn. One pike unit versus Candish Cavalry. Proving to be very formidable. And we're just not killing any of them. How, what is your missile attack? Five missile attack and you're doing this badly. Against pikes that don't even have shields. Twelve armor. Christ, that's what it is. There's no point charging our cavalry in. They're only going to die. I don't think we're actually going to win this. But I, I, I'm afraid I've always spoken plainly and I couldn't care less if we win or lose. It was always just going to be this battle. I just wanted to show you what Dale looked like. <laughs> and there's a section of the top wall of Dale. Uh, I haven't forgotten about the Sauron Law video either. I just haven't had the, des the drive to do the editing for it. <laughs> so behind. So behind. Alright, once they've fired all their arrows. Oh, you guys could actually come a little... Come in front. Look at that. They can shoot over your heads. Oh, no. We've just got some of them start arcing shots then. Fire whatever you can. You do, you're yeah, getting some kills. But five percent more of them have died. Um, well, for, unfortunately, we absolutely aren't going to win this because Vidasith in the town centre is a pike unit, and he's in his element here because they're in the towns. Obviously, if I were actually playing properly, we wouldn't have assaulted this town. But uh, it's just to show you how badly it can go for Can, which is unfortunately very bad. How many pikes left now? Eighty-seven. Oh, those guys are doing better. What about those Westron defenders that are actually fighting against you? Push them back. Victory is well within our grasp. Oh. In time our foe will surely see this and lose heart. Nice. Keep it up. Keep up the fire. Keep up the assaults. Unfortunately for those that are wondering about other things, Dunland has had almost all of the work done in DAC behind the scenes. Um, over the past few months and I would genuinely not be surprised if once Dundon really is rounded off and then a few other minor bits and bobs are polished if we wouldn't then get version 5 and thereafter remains to be seen much remains to be seen they're going to rout immediately aren't they yeah, there they go on they go and then the pikes are once again blocking the door Right, there's absolutely nothing that we can do other than charging in cavalry. The archers have got some arrows, but as you can see, they can't even finish off those ones. Right, here we go. This is going to be a massacre. 71 Variag Lancers. It really is just going to be a massacre. Can you, can you at least, like, push through them? Twenty-seven. The Warlord's Cataphracts have really underperformed in this campaign. Variag Lancers have time and time again proven to be better than them. And it's so disappointing. I think the real reason why we're losing this hand over fist is because of the towers. Towers never run out of arrows. And towers, as you know, are ridiculously good. They're still getting shot. What's shooting you now? You're miles away from the towers. Have a day off. I don't really foresee a world in which, because the only way's out. Oh, you might be able to get through there actually under that, under that archway. Right, cavalry. Yeah, no, they made it through. Nice. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Our foe fights with horns made of clay. We are winning the battle. We aren't going to win this battle. There's just no way. She said there was no way. Come on. Come on. We lost half of our men. Oh, no, their arrival did something. Right, try and get through that way. 
This is really this is just an absolutely fantastic lesson in how incredibly powerful anti-cav units are in sieges when the enemy only brings cavalry. If my army could dismount, this would be a this battle would be over immediately. Oh, at least they actually did a charge for once. Oh, well done, guys. Well done. You guys did very well, actually. You you potentially have changed the way course of the actual battle. Right, melee cavalry is on the run. Oh, we've got another one through. Excellent. Right, navigate through the city streets, if you would. Get yourself up to the town square. <laughs> I really want the cav archers to get out of here. No, you guys are running away. What? No. Oh, Lorgan, could you just be a better general, please? All right, let's try and do it. Now is the time. Flood the cavalry archers. If we can get them to the town square, we might still win this. I have hope. No, 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 no. Keep going through. Let's go. Let's go. Ignore the pikemen. There's enough of a gap at the moment. There you go. Go, 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 go. Keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running. Keep running, keep running, keep running. Excellent work. Excellent work. Excellent work. The wind riders can stay there and do the dying. How difficult is it to double click game? Come on. Right, we've got 59 of them standing by and ready over there. I don't know where these guys are. They probably made it out there somewhere and then revitalized. But Oh no, one of them's over here, aren't they? Heavy cavalry! Heavy cavalry! And the cav archers are in. The cav archers are in. Go, 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 go. Down the streets, down the streets. Let's do it, boys! We will cut off the serpent's head. Get me the cavalry archers into the center of the city. Oh, the other cavalry all made it. Nicely done. Ah, oh, we're about to run out of time. I mean, we yeah, we we still aren't going to win this. This is this is going to be a a quite crushing defeat, I'm afraid. But we should be able to at least. Deny. Uh, we should be able to just kill some stuff. Go on, fire at them. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. It is outrageous how much defense these Lake Town pikemen have. They are just not dying. They just refuse to die. Oh, that was a much better charge. Well done, you guys. Showing all the others how charging works. We are up against an entire army of anti-cavalry units. Two pikes and three uh, spears. Four fights with horns made of clay. We are winning the battle. Oh, we got them down to 66 at least. We've got 59 of these standing by. Nah, we can't win now. The timer is now completely against us. Our army's maneuverability and ability to get to Dale quickly is then what also unfortunately cost it. But obviously if we were playing the real battle, I've said that before already. If we were playing the real battle, we would not have attacked this city in a million years. We would have sat and waited for them to come out. With horns made of clay. And once they left the we city, the city the we would have shredded them in repeated charges and cavalry archer harassment. We managed to kill some of those Westron defenders, but there it ends. The day has passed. And we must accept 1,639. Vidasith slaughtered us. Holy hell. 157. No bad axe. We got the top spot. <laughs> Not surprised at all. Not surprised in the least. I was surprised at the beginning, but then when I really thought about their actual makeup, and then when I remembered that Dale has 
Dale is a really defensible city because you can't mount the walls. Then it became quite apparent that that was going to be a crushing defeat. But I don't mind. And that leaves us with a few minutes then to look at the way the world ended in this canned campaign. And then Moving that's you lot. Remember, there's no watch. live stream this weekend yeah. because I'm not here. I'm away all weekend. And I can't do a live stream when I'm not about. So our army died on the walls of Dale. Damn shame. Let's have a look around our we'll area first. I'm on duty. Dale has a lot of troops in and around this area. We would have had a real hard time getting up to Dale. They have Thranduil's Halls. And of course, Erebor standing by. Dale has a large chunk of the forest as well, and that's where their armies for Brown Boat came from. Uh, but we could have taken those, and we, we would have been able to push them back and slowly crush their soul. They don't have really anything north of the Kelduin. So, Burmarlinge has a pitiful garrison. Condovan, there's that fellow there, Baduila, but he has hardly any troops. And as we would make our way through, they would have sent troops down, of course, but we would have defeated Dale so, so easily, unfortunately, for them. Because whilst they have these great defensive positions and they can take our cities, out on the field as can, almost no one can beat you. Uh, no one really comes close to you. Rohan's probably the closest and the best hope. Now Erebor seem to be thinking that they might stick their head in with the loss of Rhun as an enemy. And Thir has come down to attack Winterian York. Whether he actually would attack or not, I don't know. Because we are neutral. But I feel confident he would attack. Because we're attacking his ally. Uh, Rune still has Captain Ormar up here who keeps just walking backwards and forwards between the two bridges and can't make up his mind what to do. They've got a fairly sizable garrison on a Burka and if they had more troops than that so I'm, I wonder if they've sailed them somewhere. But no because that guy doesn't have any troops in with him so maybe not. Well not maybe not, definitely not. They've put the garrison back in the Burka. That's interesting. What they have done, though, is one of the first ones to actually move into Mordor, other than Dol Guldur, who have taken the Moran and, and Minas Morgul, which I find quite interesting. Uh, and Gondor are now fighting against Dol Guldur instead of Mordor. <laughs> Rune took Darsgrum, and that's now their capital city. And they've still got Oibamari and Amu Khand, of course. And Captain Kimak is keeping Gazmir away. For a time, Harad had their faction leader down here, but he seems to have buggered off. Oh, there he is. Serpent Lord Kuzaimar, Conqueror of Kand. They've claimed the land that Gondor and Dol Amroth had. And Harad are now the chief enemy of Gondor, really. Dogaldor are a threat, but of course Dogaldor also have Dale. They have the um, Anduin. And they have Lothlorien. So they can't really throw that much into the southern area. And as you can see, the garrisons for Dogaldor down here are nothing. They, do they don't have the troops to defend it. Mordor still has some forces down here. Um, but before we deal with Mordor, let's just have a look at the um, Ardenaim. They haven't done anything. I believe the Ardenaim are allied to Harad. Oh, no, they're not. Oh, that's interesting. Are the Ardenaim at war or allied to anyone? Are they playing a part in today's proceedings? I don't think so. Oh, there you go. They have no allies, and they're at war with Gondor, Dol Amroth, Bree, Mordor, and the High Elves because of their incursion in the north where they still hold Mithlon. That's interesting. Beaten back to Mithlon, though, but... That's all they have. So the Ardenai are totally out of this campaign down here. They could attack Harad, but I don't think they will. Uh, but otherwise, Gondor saved by the destruction of Mordor. Dogaldor doing relatively well. If we can turn back to the north, to the forest and beyond, the Wood Elves are holding Gundabad in check, and that's what's allowed the Dwarves to reclaim Anazanar and Witherboard and push west. They've not got Dane's Halls. Dane's Halls is a very formidable defence, and the auto-resolve sometimes is a bit scrappy. Uh, Gundabad gets relatively well no they don't have very good armor do they and armor is normally what the ai auto resolve loves but in any event gundabad are holding on the dwarves are pushing them and so are the elves but gundabad stays strong anduin i'm surprised to see the anduin still alive they're normally a casualty in a lot of campaigns we're 140 turns in just shy uh, so i'm surprised to see them at this point actually very surprised indeed uh, and with them and Lothorian are keeping them all alive. But of course the real change up in this game, which would have been an interesting play if we were in that area, is the destruction of Mordor through cheats has meant that they've resettled in Rohan. So they reclaimed the thing, the lands that they took from Rohan and they ignored and abandoned Mordor altogether and their armies are trying desperately to get to Rohan, which is now a new, a second Mordor in the heart of Rohan, which is interesting, isn't it? Rohan is still alive. They have Fangorn Camp and the Hornburg, as you can see there. Isengard has not managed to push them. Now, the interesting thing that would develop from this is that Isengard and Mordor are not allied, and they would probably attack each other if this con position continued. But Isengard is keeping Enedwyth at bay, and unlike our reunited kingdom campaign, Enedwyth is well and truly out of this one. 
They have been mostly defeated in Enderwyth itself. They still have Elk Food in the lands around that, but Barad Vin is gone. Um, they're not doing very well, but they have taken Dunyard, which is interesting. Belorn and Theragrondost are theirs, but Gondor and Enderwyth not too bothered about that. Most people in this area are worried about Isengard, the rising power. Bree are another real surprise. Very, very strong indeed. All the way to Ostgelon, indeed. That's m m amazing. They took a Numenas, crime and Etlis. The Dunedain have not been defeated, but they have lost Tirthuin. Uh, sorry, that's too hard of a TH. Tirthuin. Uh, but they've got Fornost Orion and Aragorn is still alive. Hiking Aragorn I the aggressive. <laughs> I think that epithet has been given to him by his enemies, I would assume. Angmar and Ered Lewin back and forthing in the north. So Eriador, the only real shock here is Bree doing really, really well. Um, Mitchell Delving being upgraded to a large city. I love these um, strategy models for Bree. I love Bree! I love Bree! I don't like the cheese, but I love the faction. Bree is so fun, and we're going to be fighting against Bree. That's partly why I've chosen Dunland. We're going to do what we can to ignore Enidwyth because of their prominence in the RK. But if we can hit Bree, that's something we've never seen on the channel. I've never fought against Bree. I think not to my knowledge. We've played as Angmar a few times, so we have fought against Bree, sorry. But never, we've never played as Dunland. I, I don't think I have ever played as Dunland on the channel, so it's going to be all rather anew. So that's good. High Elves not doing massively well, but what they have got is actually quite good for the High Elves, to be honest. They've managed to take Dol Vorn, although they lost Buzzer Doom, and they took Zag Kala, which is quite a gain. Zag Kala's really wealthy. It's a very useful province to take. Moria is still alive and has this, the core reasons you'd expect, but the Khazad Dummies are doing very well. Uh, the Dummies have taken Byrig Dunlarak. They forced Dunland out of Dunland. They've taken both Khazadums. I'm surprised Moria is still in this, to be honest. They must be holding on in Austin and Thiel. Is that their capital? No. Where's their capital then? Goblin Town, maybe? That's a bit too far north, isn't it? Yeah, huge city, castle. Uh, they've got Mythelberg as well, large town. It must be one of these central provinces. Anon and Arod? No, 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 no. Bruinos, surely. Yes, there we go. The most central of their regions. Come on, Gally, get your head in the game. Get your head in the goddamn game. Lothlorien is still alive, pestering Dol Guldor. Hasn't done anything that you wouldn't expect it to do. It always just moves out, takes a limb here, takes a Dreikarn, and then that's it. It sits and does sod bloody all. Bloody elves. Letting everybody else. Recently, the faction leader of Edward Lewin died. And by recently, I mean in the end turn when I was building my siege equipment at Dale, the faction leader of Edward Lewin died. But otherwise, that's a very well-balanced world, if um, we may say so ourselves, if all of the modders can pat ourselves on the back. But now with the Dunland campaign, we are moving fresh into the world without me. So the Reunited Kingdom and the Candish campaign, well, not canned really, but the Reunited Kingdom is kind of the last thing uh, that I really did, and what, that I was involved with. So that's the last sort of touch of my legacy. But Dunland is entirely the new team. Everything about the Dunland overview is all Lynx's vision coupled with those that created the unit models and the like. So it's really my first opportunity to show off the new team's um, work. And I think you will be pleased with it all. So stay tuned next week for a developer diary to see what you can sort of expect to see. If you don't want to watch the whole campaign to learn about DAC, that's not a problem. They are very lengthy. And if you are interested, Dunland will kick off next weekend. And then when I can, ideally I'll use the long weekend to actually do the Sauron video. So hopefully Sauron will follow shortly after. Um, but otherwise, that's your lot. Thank you for staying tuned all this time. Thank you for watching The Rise of Canned. We've defeated Dorwinian, we've basically defeated Rune, and I think we would have had Dale over a barrel. I don't know how we would have done it if the dwarves had gotten involved, but we've shown you now everything that Canned has to offer. There is nothing left, I'm afraid. We got our temple units out, we got the great beasts out, and chiefly we got the warlords units out, which are the last of our line. That is the entire Candish roster for sale there. Uh, so the only thing missing really is of course the blue wizard script but we've shown that on the channel before and we were here to show the um, nomad start mode so that's it up so thank you very much for watching if indeed you have thank you for sticking with the playthrough all the way through i hope you're looking forward to done that i am personally uh, i never play factions i'm not interested in which is why mordor's never been on the channel before i just wouldn't be able to make it entertaining but dunland let's play a bloody good underdog story let's hit everyone that we can hit let's show the northern dunadine who the true strength in eriador is going to be and if possible let's try and ally with ened wife and get them on board so we don't have to fight them i think that will be our first goal is can we ally ened wife 
Um, we can maybe attack them later, but we fought Enidwyth a lot in the Reunited Kingdom playthrough, and we're going to fight them more now. That They're our main target now. So I'm reticent to attack them. So we'll see where we get on. Also, of course, there'll be another Age of Empires video next week as the tournament progresses. Thank you for watching those if you have. The Diplomacy games get way more views than the tournament ones, which is an interesting social experiment in my mind, seeing what people like on the channel. Um, but the tournament, there's only six. There'll only be six episodes and the third one's next week. So there's hardly any left of that. And then it will go back to some Diplomacy games. But otherwise, that's your lot. Thank you for coming by today and have a wonderful week. And until we speak again, dear friends, Navair Neden Pedamat Medulin. And farewell.